Opera SM here with the Battle of the Four Tribes Part 1 video. This is for Node 3.3, Kumina, and I've been excited about this one for several days. Uh, the special support gem on this node is really dangerous. Uh, it is if you draw a card, all cards in your hand gain one mana. Whenever you cast or whenever a creature enters the battlefield, draw a card. And whenever you cast a spell, your first creature gets plus one, plus one. Uh, that, if you build around that special support gym, you can build a pretty busted deck. And I've evolved this over time, and I'm really excited to give a try to what I think is a big, big advancement into it. So... Um, what we need to do for this event, first of all, is we need to summon six or more merfolk, and then we need to cast four or more spells that cost nine or less. So the deck we use plays on that premise of trying to cast a whole bunch of really cheap stuff that either is a creature that will draw us a card or spells that will draw us a card to get mana onto the cards in hand, which should keep auto-casting themselves until we have enough damage on the board to kill the opponent. So we need a Merfolk. Um, we are using Ral Zarek, by the way, uh, for this, because he has great mana gains in blue and red. And if we uh, ever get up to six loyalty, that pick uh, one of the top four cards of your library and give it six mana is fantastic with this. Uh, but there are four... Uh, for, for four mana merfolks, there are two of them. There is this Wind Rider Patrol. There is one other one as well. Um, if you don't have access to any of the blue ones, there is a green one that cost five if you went into different color combinations. But uh, So we have Wind Rider Patrol as our one merfolk. And then we have two other creatures in the deck. We have Impetuous Devils, which is three for a 6-1 Haste Trample. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target creature you don't control gains defender until end of turn. At the end of your turn, this creature is destroyed. But we should hopefully win the turn we start going off with all these guys. But just super efficient hasty creature is good. Another great efficient hasty creature is Lightning Runner. This one costs 6 for a 2-2 two, two haste double strike. Uh, when it deals combat damage, energize 2, and it can overload to uh, buff all our creatures up plus X plus Y, where it's their base power and base toughness till end of turn again. Hopefully we're winning um, before we even match some of those energized gems. Uh, we only have three creatures in this deck. Uh, previous versions of this that I ran with Popper stuff um, had a bunch of creatures, and you had to swap the creatures back and forth while reinforcing a token stack, but with only three creatures in the deck, um, this should run a lot faster. The old one took about 20 minutes. Uh, but the idea for a lot of these draw spells came from Madrin from Goblin Pile. He was talking about kind of a ten tangential project, and it got me thinking how good that these uh, draw cheap draw spells would be. So let's go through and look at that, which is the remainder of our deck. We have Pull From Tomorrow, which is awesome for only two mana. Discard one card, then draw five cards, so this can help jumpstart getting mana on our cards to uh, start doing things. Artificer's Epiphany, draw a card for two. Stratus Walk, costs three to draw a card and give target creature flying. This one will target, so it'll slow us down a little, but I like it because it costs three. Glimpse of Freedom, another draw spell for three. We probably are not going to ever use the uh, Buried on it, but uh, if we do, um, it is a bonus. Uh, Coastal Discovery, draw two cards for three. We probably are not going to awaken it, um, but it's not going to clog up our hand because uh, drawing cards adds co mana to cards, so we'll have at least three to always cast as opposed to um, you know, doing matches where all the extra mana would go into the awaken. Uh, catalog is one of our four drop spells. I like this over something like divination because the you discard a card and draw two cards of it is nice because we actually want to draw more cards so even if we had uh six cards in hand we'd cast this we'd go down to four then go back up to six but that would allow us to draw an extra card 
uh, to charge some of these spells. And then our last four mana spell is Hieroglyphic Illuminations. Uh, draw two for four, and we can also just cycle it for two, which could charge more spells in our hand if we need be. So again, the goal is uh, hopefully as soon as turn one, two, if not definitely by turn three, is definite, is just uh, start casting things, and then things will keep auto-casting, and we'll just stop uh, whenever we get to a point that uh, we have enough damage on the board to win. So let's go and give this a try. I am super excited for this combo. Um, and if you don't have all these cards, there's a lot of different variations that you can do on it. I have two creatures with haste, but if you don't have creatures with haste like that that you want to attack with, there's a couple different options. You can play a creature that gives other creatures haste, like I think it's uh, Chasm Guide and then uh, Goblin Bushwhacker are two great ones that can give the rest of your team haste. Um, also, there's a spell, Samut Sprint, um, that I like because it costs six, but it gives your creature plus three, plus one, and it draws you a card. So again, keeping to draw cards and refreshing things is really important. All right, it looks like we're gonna be able to go off here, which is just awesome. So because Pull From Tomorrow is gonna let us uh, discard a last card, and then draw into stuff so we should be able to cast anything that we have here which is fantastic so and we might even be able to get uh, some tokens on this coastal discovery but i want to be careful to make sure that i still get to cast the pull from tomorrow but let's see we can get a match of blues and whites which is going to give us 11 mana and then that should drop the reds as well. So 11 plus nine, uh, 11 plus eight is 19. So it should give us three, four, and then plus 10. Yeah, so this should give us all the mana that we need. This is awesome. I think if I understand how this deck is gonna work, we should be getting a turn one win off of this, which is awesome. So again, we're drawing cards, and as we draw cards, they're gaining mana. We want to do pull from tomorrow. Yes, this is so cool. So cool. And pretty much we're always going to want to discard to draw because it's going to give us mana to cast all of our things. Good luck, that gave us enough of the mana of that six mana that we needed to cast our um, Lightning Runner, which is going to be coming up here. All right, and I'm trying to think here in terms of best damage output that we can do. Um, I think we're gonna want our double striker in the first slot. So actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this merfolk. And then um, when the next merfolk comes in, which is coming up here, then we are going to replace our island tokens because you see they're getting a huge buff from the uh, a huge buff from when we cast spells um, our first creature gets plus one plus one so what we're going to want to do is replace that island token and then make our double striker be the one getting plus one plus one because that'll mean a lot less waiting as this loop is going and again if you want this a little more automated um, i wasn't sure exactly how this would work um, 
So uh, to make it more automated, what one could do is cast, is place spells that auto cast like divination, um, potentially over um, certain things that don't cast, but that then does give the possibility that in the first turn or match that you might not be able to completely go off if things cost an extra mana or two. So I think it's a compromise just to click confirm sometimes. Um, it's great, but not having to replace a bunch of creatures like the old versions of this did. Um, it's key to figure out that you can do this with only three creatures and fill the rest out with uh, cantripping spells. I'm so excited about this. Yeah, whoever decided that special, the special support gem node on this one, um, and even before it, it was really troublesome with cycling, it was kind of broken in half because you could just pay to cycle and then all your cards would gain mana and then you could basically just have infinite mana charging cards to cycle. That's a little harder to do now because you have to cast Merfolk on the objective. Um, but it's still this, it's, it's, uh, if you, if you build around that special support gem like this, you can do some silly, silly things like we are doing right now and getting a turn one win. It's pretty awesome. So nope, we're going to want to keep looping until we have lethal damage on the board and we've cast enough merfolk. It looks like we've cast, I think, five merfolk so far because we replaced one. Yes, yeah, so this is awesome. So basically, um, if you don't have these pieces, what you just... All you need really are cheap creatures. You need stuff that costs less than six because you're going to draw, you know, a card's going to be in your hand and it's going to cycle through and get up to six mana. But you need, um, you need creatures, which when they come into play will draw you a card, or spells that will draw you cards. Again, you need to be able to draw cards and not uh, fetch cards because fetch is not something that's going to... Uh, gain you mana, but so cheap, cheap uh, creature spells or spells that uh, create tokens, creature tokens, or um, spells or supports that draw you cards. Yes, this is so cool. And then I guess while we're comboing off, I should talk about some of the other variants, which are more popper variants. If you can't, you, know, you don't have enough cards where you uh, can only play three creatures and fill the rest out with draw spells, um, what you can do is you can play more than three creatures. But what that will mean is that you will have to keep replacing creatures on the board. And if you do that, what you want to do is focus on keeping one or two stacks um, of either tokens or creatures that will be able to attack that turn. And you'll just have to gradually build them up. And that can just take longer, another 15, 20 minutes with a lot of clicking. But it definitely is doable. So even if you have a pretty new collection um, you should be able to um, to do this exact same sort of thing. It just might involve replacing a lot more creatures on the board and taking another maybe 15 minutes or so to win. But you can do this with, you know, Goblin uh, uh, Bonded Construct, uh, Caustic Caterpillar, Goblin Glorybringer, I think is his name. Um, you know... Um, Artificer's Epiphany, a lot of, um, you know, cards, those are four cards just from Origins that are commons, I believe. Uh, so you, uh, you're a good chunk of the way there at that point, and then there's a lot of good red three drops in standard right now that you can, um, that you could plug into this sort of thing as well. So, uh, 
Yeah, so it, this is a really, really cool archetype and you really only get to do it on this event where you get the special thing that when you draw cards, your stuff gets mana, but it is pretty cool. So let's see, we have enough Merfolk cast right now. So basically all we need to do at this point is just keep looping until we have enough power on the board to win. So we have a double striker, which is getting bigger. It's almost up to 100 power. Our merfolk is not going to be able to attack because it does not have haste. So what we're doing is looking at the sum of our, of our impetuous devils and our lightning runner. So our lightning runner is currently 102 damage and 42 uh, for the impetuous devils. So pretty much um, once our lightning runner gets up to um, about 70 power or so, um, we should be pretty uh, pretty set to win this, I think, because uh, we just need to get up to a, a total power, attacking power of 204 or more. Yes, I am so happy that this idea works. It's just really cool. It's fun to get an idea, and this event comes up so infrequently that you don't get a chance to try cool ideas on weird stuff like this sometimes. So I am very thankful that this has been able to come about to test again. Again, last time that I started doing this, I realized I could do this with a bunch of like three and four drop creatures. Uh, but the, as I mentioned before, just the idea that you can add these cheap cantripping spells uh, to just draw and also get a fake, effectively the same effect without having to replace a bunch of creatures was a huge, huge uh, jump in uh, figuring out how to make this um, a little more tolerable to play so you're not replacing creatures for 15 or 20 minutes. So thanks again, uh, Madrin, for, um, for your thoughts about that. All right, we're getting pretty close here. Because Impetuous Devils is 70 power. So yeah, so next time the loop timer can uh, stop, we're going to say yes, we would like to stop the loop because um, with this spell, we're going to have, that'll be 100 and f uh, 144 plus 60, 60 is over 204. So we are pretty set here. Yes, this is so cool. <laughs> We got the turn one win, which is sweet. Very, very sweet. I guess what I can do is I can just now elect uh, not to cast cards because um, at this point now we just have to attack. All right. Turn one combo win, yeah, using using the 3.3 special support gem. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a ton of fun recording this, and I am looking forward to finding other weird, cool things like this that we can do in the game and enjoy together. I hope you can use this to find similar glee and cackle maniacally as you get turn one wins with this deck. Um, let me know if you like this or have questions um, about how it plays or other substitutions you could make. Uh, we're discussing a lot with uh, players in the From the Ashes Slack right now and helping folks adjust the deck. Um, we had someone else that got a turn one win with it that ran a variant with um, with a token stack and Samut's uh, uh, 
Sandwich Sprint. So there are lots of other ways to do this, even if you don't have Lightning Runner or some of or Impetuous Devils or some of those other cards. All right, take care, everyone. Yes, turn one, win.